Hello everyone, Cat Weasel here, welcome to the channel and welcome back to our playthrough of Mansions of Madness, second edition, where we're playing Rising Tide. I've already put a spoiler warning in, but I'll just reiterate it. There will be spoilers to the plot in this game. It is replayable, all the scenarios are replayable and they're slightly different each time. But if you want a totally brand new experience without having any idea of what is going on, like I'm currently having at the moment, then stop watching now. Go and do something else. Watch another channel. There's loads of other channels, loads of other tube table channels that you can have a look at and they've got great stuff going on. I think Paul Darcy, Doug Herring, uh, One Stop Corp Shop, Rolling Solo. Um, who else has got playthroughs going on at the moment? There is uh, Rob Oren's always got something going on. There is lots of other stuff going on from Tube Tablers. Board Games with Niramas, I think he's actually got a... He's got some sort of giveaway going on. I think it's the expansion to Terraforming Mars. So go over there, check out his competition. I think that's, that's all I can remember off the top of my head. So uh, by all means, go watch something else if you do not want spoilers for Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition and the Rising Tide scenario. Uh, one other, th one thing from last turn, just uh, a clarification. Uh, we didn't have any errors, but I did get asked about how many actions that Joe Diamond took. He only took two. Now it looked like he took more because we were doing a lot of selection of options. But an option is only an action when it has an action icon next to it. So he chose as an action to listen at the door last turn. Then he got uh, two more options as a result of that. One was to open the door and one was to knock on the door. Both those options did not have an action icon. It was just a continuation of him listening at the door. We'll probably see this quite a lot in this particular scenario. The reason being is we will be asking a lot of questions. So you will sort of go down an avenue of questioning and rather than spend about 60 actions and about 15 rounds, <laughs> <laughs> to go through a particular avenue of questioning you will probably pick one that'll be your action and then there'll be a few options running off that that will be free options hope you understand that but uh, that's how it works okay so that is it for my little ramble at the beginning of turn two Let's get stuck in. As I mentioned last turn, we'll have a look at the incriminating evidence and see if there is anything that's come out of what we have done already. So let's get across to the app just before we start the investigator phase. And here we are at the app. So what I've done is I've sort of hit this little icon here and that's brought us things that we can interact with like the incriminating evidence which is here so when we press that this comes up it says you have organized the information on your six suspects into dossiers as you investigate each dossier will be updated with information about that suspect including what the suspect says about him or herself and about what other suspects say about him or her some suspects might also tell you about the locations of Innsmouth which dossier would you like to review Zadok Allen Detective Blake Bobby Foster, we haven't spoken to any of those, so we won't actually look at their dossier. So we'll go to other suspects. And there's Athera Gilman, Joyce Little, Sylvia Marsh. So we've seen Athera and we've seen Sylvia, so we'll look at them. So first is Gilman. Gilman is one of your suspects. She is the proprietor of the Gilman house, the hotel at which you were staying. Continue. And that's it. We haven't really spoken to her yet, so it's probably a bit similar for Sylvia Marsh. Sylvia Marsh is one of your suspects. She descends from the Marsh family, strangely enough, an important family in Innsmouth. So we haven't really got anywhere yet as regards information. So we'll get more information as we go along. But I think we'll have a look at this at the start of every turn. Just for people that we've interacted with. So there we go. We'll cancel. 
We've seen that. We'll go quickly back to the board and we will start the investigation phase. And here we are at the investigator phase and we are with Joe and Harvey in the Gilman Hotel office and they're with Athera Gilman. I think what Joe's going to do is he's going to let Harvey ask her the questions. It's a bit of a like hard case is Joe so he's going to let Harvey deal with the ladies. Harvey probably be a little bit better his influence certainly seems to be better so let's have him chatting to people just at the moment if it gets a bit rough and tumble later on then we'll switch the questioning to joe and uh, joe can sort of play bad cop and harvey can play good cop so what we're going to do is going to interact with athera we'll have to do that in the app so let's pop across to the app and harvey can ask her a few questions and here we are back at the app. So we'll move over here. And what we'll do is we shall select Athera. Gilman looks perfectly calm. Pardon me, I did not realise I had an appointment with Miss Marsh today. How can I help you? Well, what we're we going to put? We can either say, what were you fighting about? Tell me about yourself or ask about the locals. Hmm, I think tell me about yourself. I think that's how he would go about it. Good old Harvey. So you want to know about the woman with a key to your room. Very wise. Gilman winks, a warm smile spreading over her face. Mostly I'm here helping guests and keeping this old girl up and running. I've been working in this hotel for most of my life. My father was the owner of this place before me, and his father was the owner before him. I am an Innsmouth woman, born and bred, but I love hearing travellers' stories as they pass through, and that is about it. As I mentioned in the introduction, we have no actions here, so if we carry on, this will not cost us an action. So we've seen her painting supplies, and why are you called by your family name? Well, she hasn't got married yet. So we'll say, do you enjoy painting? Gilman arches an eyebrow, then gestures at the painting supplies on the shelf. You noticed the mess, did you? Oh yes, though I hardly have the time to do it anymore. Believe it or not, one of Sylvia's cousins taught me when I was a young girl. She was very talented. Everyone said so. She painted the portrait of my family that is in the lounge. She left Innsmouth years ago. I always wonder what became of her. Game one clue. So that's got us a clue. We'll dig a clue out. I won't wave it in front of the camera. I'll just put it onto Harvey's sheet. And we'll press continue. Right, that's it. That's our first interaction. So what's Harvey going to do next? Well, I think he's going to ask her another question. He's going to be the question. He'll be the interrogator. Did you want to talk about something else? We'll ask about the locals. Oh, were you looking for someone in particular? Likely as not, I can point you in the right direction. Ask about the suspects you've met. Well, we haven't met any really. I have a feeling that Sylvia Marsh won't count, so... Let's give her the list of names. Hmm, well, Bobby is my other guest at the moment. Knew it! Nice boy, a writer, but a bit overzealous. The detective caught him trying to break into a basement last week, if you can believe that. Bobby spends most of his time at the docks or poking in the shops downtown. Joyce Little runs our bookshop downtown, but if you need... What is that? But if you want to see some real valuable books, you need to check out her warehouse on the docks. You can find Detective Blake downtown. He is a good man. I am actually pretty lucky. The detective lives right across the street from me. Miss Marsh lives by us too, but you really ought to make an appointment to see her. I cannot say about Zadok. He comes and goes as he likes. Right, so that's it. We've interacted with her twice, so that is it for Harvey's actions. So what we'll do now 
is we will go back to the board and back to Joe Diamond. And here we are with Joe. What Joe's going to do is, while Harvey's having a chat, he's just going to wander around the room like you do. He's going to go here, and I think we will just check out these painting supplies. So he's going to interact with this search token. In order to do that, we need to go back to the app. And here we are back at the app, so let's just press that. One shelf contains many painting supplies, and we shall search. Gilman watches you. Oh, please do not touch those. I knew I should have cleaned up that shelf a bit. I promise nothing else in this hotel is as untidy as my art supplies. You know, I am always op optimistic that I will find the time to paint, even if that has not happened yet. You refrain from touching the supplies, but, true to Gilman's word, you do notice all her painting supplies are either new or look like they have not been opened in a long time. Gain one clue, then discard this search token. Right, I'll discard the search token and get a clue. So we're getting a few clues together, but we're not really getting anywhere as regards what's going on. So we'll press continue. I keep pressing the phone <laughs> instead of the actual tablet idiot right that's it for his first action for his second action is actually going to open the door so we may as well just press that the door between the hotel's office and the street has a small curtained window we will explore Ooh, streets the streets in front of the hotel are made of uneven stone Discard this explore token and place the two street and street corner two tiles as indicated. Right, I'll just do that. Won't be a second. Right, I'll place those, so let's continue. A man in a suit leans against the wall, waiting by the hotel side door. Place a person as indicated. This is Detective Blake, one of the suspects. Oh, he's hiding out, is he? In the street. Guilty! Let's grab him. Put him out in the street. Right, we've placed him. Papers flutter down the street in the slight wind. Place a search token as indicated. Oh, it's getting exciting. Search token placed. The thick fog keeps you from seeing too far. It's foggy. It's foggy, everyone. Place a sight token as indicated. It's foggy in Innsmouth. Oh, dearie me. The fog's rolling in. You may move one space into the explored area. Right, I think what we'll do is we'll split up here. We'll do a never split the party and split the party. And we'll move Joe Diamond outside into the street. He seems just the kind of guy to actually speak to the law. Because he has a lot of dealings with the law being a private investigator. And what we'll do with Harvey is probably in a future turn we'll shove Harvey into the lounge area of the Gilman Hotel. He can chat to Sylvia Marsh. Then perhaps he can chat to, was it Bobby Foster? the writer or journalist or whatever the hell he was, the other guest, and we will have Joe Diamond outside looking for the others. So I think the others are Blake, the detective. We've got the Joyce Little. She's the bookkeeper, isn't she? And we've got Zadok, who's just like wandering all over the shop. Right, okay, so let's continue. Right, and that's it. So we'll move away from the app and we'll go back to the board. So here we are. Just a quick check of the board at the end of the investigation phase. We've got Joe. He's out here in the sort of alleyway at the side of the hotel. He's noticed that Victor Blake is mooching around in a suspicious fashion out in the alley. But he does live near here. That's probably his house up here. 
got some papers blowing around that we might have to investigate and the fog rolled in so we cannot see too far up the alleyway we'll have to walk this way in order to have a look and interact with that token so yes we'll find out I think Joe what he'll do next turn is he'll have a chat with Victor and Harvey we'll probably send Harvey this way and uh, he can see if he can have a chat with Sylvia Marsh but that's the end of the investigation phase so what we'll do is we'll go back to the app and we will do the mythos phase and here we are at the mythos phase so let's just press this and the investigator phase indeedy dun, dun, dun. an unnatural wind kicks up tearing at your clothes this mythos event affects the investigator with the most items well, that's Harvey. Harvey's in the ha <laughs> Harvey's in the hotel, but never mind. Oh, sorry, got to continue. A sudden gust of wind howls and shakes your loose possessions. Agility one. Right, it's probably because Joe left the door open. So we're actually going to make a roll. Yay! Right, let's get back to the board and make a roll. Right, here we are at the board. So he's got to make an agility test and there's a number one after it. That means he needs a single success. So let's check Harvey's agility. His agility is appalling. It's two. <laughs> right. So two dice. We need one success. Now he does get a clue symbol there. And he is going to spend one of his clues because I don't want anything bad happening. He's going to spend a clue and he's going to change that into an elder sign and a success. So he has succeeded. I'll put that clue token back into the supply. We'll go back to the app and see what happens. And here we are back at the app. If you pass, the wind settles. If you fail, you lose your grip on something. Drop one random item. Well, we've, ro we've dropped nothing because... Even with his appalling two agility, he's managed to do it. The clock strikes noon, no immediate effect. Right, if I remember correctly, we've got four days. So already we're at noon. I don't know what... Is it perhaps going to be two turns before we get one of these time checks each time? Probably. I hope it doesn't go straight to midnight on the next one. Otherwise... We're really going to have to get a move on. But the clock struck noon. And we go into the investigator phase of turn three. We're going to leave it there. Again, it does suit me to do these shorter turns at the moment. We may move to double turns at some point. But at the moment, we'll leave it at this. Right, so that is it for turn two. Let's get over to the board. And here we are back at the board. So I've saved and quit the game. And this is where we're up to. We've got Harvey in the office. As mentioned, we've got Joe out here. He's with the detective, Victor Blake. And we have got Athera Gilman. Okay, everything is looking funky. So yes, we'll stop it here. And we will do turn three next. It is getting pretty exciting. We're out, we're out there in the streets. We've already moved on to noon of the first day. But we have met three suspects. Two of which we haven't actually met. But we've seen them. We've seen the um, Detective Blake. And we have seen Miss Marsh. We've actually talked to Athera Gilman. So that's good. I think what I'll do next turn is rather than review incriminating evidence at the start of the turn, I'll do it at the end of the turn and then we'll do it as a sort of review. So this part of the turn, next turn, we'll have a look at incriminating evidence just before we finish. As mentioned, the plans for next turn, Joe has a chat with Blake and Harvey will probably move off to the lounge and get ready to have a chat with Sylvia Marsh. Okay, right, so that is it for turn two of Mansions of Madness, second edition, and Rising Tide. 
Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all the subscriptions. Thanks for all the views. Thanks for all the likes. Thanks for all the dislikes. And thanks for all the help and support. If you've noticed any errors, please give me a shout. And if you have been across to Board Game Links to upvote the site, thank you very much. And again, big thanks to everybody over at BGG who has liked the threads, liked the videos, or made a comment. It really is appreciated. Thank you so much. As mentioned, this is the end of turn two. So, I hope to see you in turn three. But until then, this is me, Cat Weasel, signing off. Toodaloo.